Hi everybody, this is Jerry Corley, founder of the Stand-Up Comedy Clinic. I'm going to do something right now I've never done before, but I just want to... I've been getting a lot of questions about how I go about my joke writing process uh, from students and, um, and uh, you know, other people alike. And I just like to show you, uh, you just basically saw on the screen a little flash of my lists that I've put together. Uh, it's one of the, one of the tools I use to, um, uh, to write with. Now, it's called the listing technique. I'm going to show you how it works. The listing technique, by the way, is the most, one of the most powerful joke writing devices or techniques you can use uh, in the business. Because, listen closely. Uh, and have your notebooks on this one. Write something down here. If you're going to write anything down, write, th write this down. Um, a joke, one of the definitions for a joke is a convergence, a convergence of two or more clearly identifiable ideas. You got that? A joke, this is one of the definitions of a joke. A joke is two, when two or more clearly identifiable ideas come together. It's called incongruence. Incongruence. It's basically a juxtaposition of contrasting elements. Things that don't normally fit together, we make fit together, and that's what makes a joke funny. It's like, uh, you know, flashback to the odd couple or something like that. You put two people together who don't normally fit together, and you have comedy. That is probably one of the most popular joke formulas used in certainly in in commercial comedy commercially accepted comedy used today like that uh, the kind you see on Leno or on Jimmy Kimmel or on Jimmy Fallon they often take this type of formula and put it together um, so how does it work basically when I sit down to write I sit down to write um, there's two different ways you can write comedy you can do comedy one is what I call the coincidental comedian, which is brilliant, which is great, which is wonderful. You get an inspiration, something happens, you write it down in a notebook or you record it on your, on your recorder, your digital recorder. Um, if you still have tape, come into the uh, new millennium. <laughs> But, and some people have, I know I have a recording device on my droid, so I can use that if I have an idea. Those are great things, but you have to rely on coincidence, the coincidence of something funny, a funny observation or something funny to happen in your life uh, in order for you to write it down and say, oh, here's a joke, I'm going to write it down. The other way, um, and they can both work together, by the way, the other way you create comedy is to manufacture it. That's right. Put it together. When you have nothing, you put something together. Here's the key. The key, the key is don't look for something funny. You got that? <laughs> You're not supposed to look for something funny in this. You're just supposed to look for something. Write down anything. Start with anything. Write it down and then make it funny. And if you understand the basic formulas of comedy, the ten basic formulas, you only really have to understand four, because those are the four major ones that are really used today. Um, the major formulas of comedy, once you understand those, you can start putting together jokes. Mostly wordplay or double entendre humor and incongruence. Those are the two most common as far as uh, word devices when it comes to writing comedy. So let's take a look at what we have here. We sit down to write, right? I want to sit down and do my daily writing. And uh, so I sit down in front of a blank screen. This is Microsoft Word. It's the older version because I don't like the newer version. Maybe I'll get used to it. Um, so I sit down. I'm looking at a blank screen. Now... Uh, so I have nothing right now. So then I'm going to click over to the news, and I usually go to Yahoo News, but right here I like sports, and uh, what was trending uh, uh, in Yahoo was Tiger Woods, and so I saw what was trending, and I see that Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. So let's just take that line. Let's take that line. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it on a blank document here all by itself. That's the key. Take a random line, any line, make sure it's a, you know, a full sentence. Uh, Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. It's got a subject and a predicate. Uh, as far as I remember from basic English, it, it, it is a sentence. So that's what we have. Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. Now, 
once we have it isolated, we can start to manipulate it. <clears throat> We're going to look at this line, Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. Uh, one of the other formulas in comedy, besides uh, two clearly identifiable ideas coming together, or the convergence of two clearly identifiable ideas, there's also what they call set up an assumption and shatter the assumption. Set up an assumption and shatter the assumption. So when we see this line, it's already built that in for us. Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. What is the assumption? The world top 20 what? The world top 20, we're assuming golf. Right? I mean, if, if we understand Tiger Woods as a golf star, golf celebrity, uh, and uh, that Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20, we're assuming he fell, fell out of the world top 20 in golf. So we can take that and spin it another way just by shattering an assumption. Um, what's assumed is he f it's golf. So we can say Tiger Woods fell out of the world top 20 and then spin it a different way. Um, I've got something working in my head. I'll get to that later. But what I'm going to do right now is I want to show you how this system works, this joke writing tool called the listing technique. If I have Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20, first thing I want to do, what are our converging ideas? What are our differing ideas? Tiger Woods, right? Tiger Woods, we write down everything we know about Tiger Woods. He's a golfer. Now, we have a new element, don't we? We have a new uh, idea here, converging idea, golf, a whole subject matter all by itself that can stream off and create a, a completely different list of stuff, everything we know about golf. Uh, and then we can go to the internet and look up more stuff we know about golf. Golf terminologies, uh, golf, golf phrases, golf people, golf places, golf events, golf tournaments, golf uh, equipment, all kinds of things with golf we can, we can you, you probably have lists going on in your mind right now uh, with uh, golf. Then we also have Tiger is known for his sexual prowess, right? He had an affair. That was the big scandal, his, his sexual affair. So now do we have another idea that's converging here? So two or more converging ideas. What's the other idea? So now we also have sex. Sex is always great to make jokes about because sex is actually, sex actually is a subject matter makes up the majority of all subject matter put together. Sex dominates it in the humor industry. And then one of the reasons why is because we have such big hang-ups about sex as human beings. We're worried about size, about whether we perform well or whether, you know, we look good in bed or, um, you know, did I make her feel good? Did I make him feel good? All kinds of anxieties and hang-ups we have about sex. So sex is a really dominant subject in comedy. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to be dirty. You can imply sex, too, and still get away with it. So what I have done is I've created lists... I've created lists based on golf, based on Tiger Woods, based on sex. And these are the kinds of lists I've come up with. Here we have Tiger Woods. On, the, uh, on Tiger Woods, you can see I have golf, golfer, Masters, Augusta, Skins game. Skins game, that's interesting. Uh, clubs, seven iron, irons, woods, ping, Bur Big Bertha, golf bag, driver, caddy, firing your caddy, strippers. Oh, I, I misspelled it. I put stippers. Stippers isn't going to do anything. Uh, strippers, <laughs> uh, greens, green fees, uh, leaderboard, golf tournament, CBS. Nike bunker, rough, tee off, from the tee, slice, hook, hooker, oh, there's another interesting term. And what we're going to now look for is words that have a possibility of rolling over in our other subject matter. In this uh, case, we have life and sex, and the other one, uh, the other list I have put together is strictly sex. You can see on there, now, uh, if you're young and uh, really young, this has some R rating to it uh, because you never, ever edit yourself in the first draft. You always wait. If you're playing a clean crowd, you have to clean it up, of course, um, and and make it uh, usable. I'm surprised my sex list is so short, but... <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe that's saying something about me. Uh, let's go back to the Tiger Woods. We roll down here. We have want to play around. Play around. A guess can is also is that a double entendre? You bet. It has two meanings. We can play that two ways. Back nine, 18 holes, 19 holes, 19th hole. Definitely something there. I've already got jokes rolling in my head. Uh, bucket of balls. Hit some balls. Wash some balls. Buy some new balls. Lucky balls. Title list. Spalding. Golf shoes. Golf spikes. Golf attire. Golf shirts. Golf pants. Golf gloves. Towel. Range finder. All of these bits, all of these little pieces of information dealing with golf can also juxtapose all these pieces on the right side here with sex and life. Crashed his car, taking sleeping pills, banging strippers, sex, fornicate, banging strippers, banging strippers. I'm big on spelling, and that's really clearly not right. Shanked it. Uh, you could see the possibility for crossover here on all kinds of different jokes. So I'm looking at best golfer in the world. I'm looking at um, the story of Tiger Woods. Let's go back to what the subject matter is. Key in in uh, joke writing is to stick with the subject matter. The subject matter here is K Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20. Now when I read the article, the article says that uh, number one player has not played since May 12 because of a knee and Achilles tendon injury, although he's expected to announce later this week he will return action uh, at the Bridgestone I Invitational on, th on Thursday week. Um, uh, Tiger Woods fallen in the top 20 first time since 1997. Uh, Woods has dropped from 8th to 21st in the rankings in that time. Wow, that's fast. Tiger's f fallen fast out of the rankings. Wow. Uh, so, fallen that fast out of the rankings. Uh, who else could... Uh, okay, so now, uh, joke, let's see, he dropped that fast in a year. Wow, Tiger, Tiger Woods falls out of the world top 20 um, uh, that quickly in like one year period. Uh, he dropped... Uh, drop that fast in a year? In an, in a year? Um, at this pace. Uh, by next year. By next year. By next year. By this pace. By next year, uh, he'll be... Let's see. He'll be on right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, first joke. Uh, bam! Here it is, first joke. Uh, Tiger Woods fell in the t world top 20. He uh, fell from, what was it? What do we have? We had, he fell from 8th uh, to 21st. Um, wow, he fell from 8th to 21st in a year. At this pace, by next year, he'll be outranked by Natalie Woods, and she's dead. So that's joke number one. Um, now, why, why did he drop? Uh, he had an affair um, that killed his marriage. Uh, well, okay, so here's another joke. We knew uh, this affair. We're having a conversation now with ourselves. We're having a conversation with the material. Why did this happen? Well, I often do what they call the five W's, the maxim of the five W's. That's who, what, where, why, when, and how. So there's five W's and an H. And I start asking questions to the joke. Uh, Tiger Woods fell out of the top 20. How, when, why, uh, where, uh, what caused it. All those questions I start to ask and I start to answer them. We knew this would, um, uh, this affair would kill his marriage. This affair would kill his marriage. Um, but his love life? Okay, there's a possible joke. It's not that killer, but it's there. It's uh, poignant. Uh, we knew this affair would kill his marriage, but his love life? Implying, of course, that he's in love with his golf game and not necessarily. Uh, so maybe we could, uh, um, let's see, uh, what else? Well, um, to get to, how could we get, how, how, who, what, where, why, when, and how? How could we get Tiger back to number one? Um, maybe he should go back to being a sex addict at least at least then he knew he could get it into any hole there we go there's another joke bam right 
right? Maybe he should go back to being a sex addict. At least then he knew he could get it into any hole. Yeah, that's a solid joke. All right, that works. Um, go looking back over at the lists, let's see. Finger conquering. <laughs> Make me count. Dildos back door. Two girls, one cop. Ha ha ha. Rim job. Pillow talk. Me, do me. Make love to me. Um, affair. One harmless affair. Let's try to keep up on in the theme. We're going with uh, the affair. Uh, had an affair. Fornicate. Crashed his car. Women had an affair. Many girls. Strippers in the hall. Uh, Elin Nordigan, his uh, wife. All right. So let's see. Um, let's see. Go back. Okay. I mean, who would have thought? Let's see. Who thought? that your love life, mm, your golf game, that's your golf game, right, your golf game could be hurt by one harmless affair. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Damn. I always do that. Or 120 of them. He had 120 of them, right? Or 120 of them. That's funny, right? So, uh, let's see. I mean, who would have thought that your golf game could be hurt by one harmless affair? Or 120 of them. Yeah, that's funny. Um, wow, can you believe that? Let's try that. Can you believe... Let's write, just write down the sentence. Can you believe that Tiger had uh, an affair, an affair with 120 women... Women, <laughs> woman, women, after he was married. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ethically. Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. Eth here we go. Here we go. Ethically. Ethically. Uh, that's just wrong, isn't it? That's just wrong. That's just wrong. Um, especially being a golfer. Let's see, being a golfer. Uh, you figured he... Uh, there we go. Uh, you figure he would have... would have... would have stopped at the 19th hole. <laughs> okay. There we go. There's a bam, another joke. Uh, I mean, look at this right here. You can see how the double entendre is working. In my head, I've got those lists that I already wrote down dealing with golf and with Tiger Woods and with sex. And um, in my head, these things are running through. 19th hole. There's got to be something with the 19th hole. So that pops into my mind. 19th hole is a double entendre for a woman, right? In this case, Tiger was treating women as objects or as holes or whores or whatever you want to do. Um, and then so it came back to me. Uh, I mean, who would have thought, Tiger, uh, who would have thought that your golf game would be hurt by one harmless affair? Or 120 of them. Then the other idea came to me. Can you believe that Tiger had an affair with 120 women after he was, after he was married? Ethically, that's just wrong, isn't it? Especially being a golfer, you figure he would have stopped at the 19th hole. All relates to golf, right? You see how um, see how the 19th hole, basically the 19th hole is the watering hole in a uh, on a golf course. That's the bar that you stop at to have a beer after you're done playing a round of golf. So you figure he would have stopped at the 19th hole. And does it relate to golf? Absolutely. Here's the key. The double entendres have to relate to our subject matter. That's how you make the humor. So that's where it's a double entendre. It has a double meaning in golf and in sex. So that's what we have there. Um... Let's see. Uh, see if I can look at it. We knew his affair would kill his marriage, but his love life. Uh, poor Tiger. Uh, oh, we could rewrite that joke. Poor Tiger. Um, it's now clear, staying with the theme, uh, that uh, infidelities, right? Infide infidelities. That's what they call having an affair, right? Have caused... Uh, yeah, let's shatter the assumption here. Let's make him think we're leading to a different direction here. I'll have caused the departure, yeah, and there's a better word there somewhere, the departure of uh, his one true love, right? Uh, we're assuming uh, at this point, Elon Nordegren, and, uh, and we can just change it to his golf game, right? There we go. So that's another joke. 
yeah, these two, uh, this one, uh, this joke here, and this joke here are very similar, so we'll probably just wind up using one rather than the other, or we can use one and then sell the other. Um, so at some point, let's see, uh, so uh, love or golf, uh, can you be in love, can you play golf, golf, what's the difference between love and golf, uh, golf, uh, love as uh, golf as strokes and points and uh, strokes, you count your strokes, uh, fewest strokes is the winner in golf. Um, sometimes we look at opposites in comedy. We also look at, we look at similarities and opposites. We do a listing technique. We look at similar and we look at opposite. And I will, I'll give you a sheet that, w that, that uh, really kind of, uh, you can download from this page that will really kind of isolate it for you. You get to see we, we work with similar and opposite. So I'm thinking right now, uh, golf, golf game, strokes, high strokes you lose, low strokes you win, except in sex. Now, let's go. At some point, uh, you have to make a decision. Um, do you want you want to be a good golfer? Let's use some dialogue chopping here. You want to be a good lover? Be good. Uh, want to be a good lover or a good golfer? Um, can't be both, right? Because they're opposites. Uh, that's what we're working. Can't be both uh, in love. Um, he with the fewest strokes is not uh, declared the champion. That could be better. Um, at some point, you have to make a decision. You want to be a good golfer or a good lover? Can't be both. In love, you see, because in love, he with the fewest strokes is not declared. Then you see, let's do a focuser. Uh, you see, you see, because in love, love, let's uh, I, uh, put that in quotes. In love, he with the fewest strokes is not declared the champion. There is a better verbiage there. There's got to be some better uh, play of players. Play of Pa, pa. Yes, uh, here it is. Uh, because uh, Tiger goes to the strip clubs. Tiger considers himself a, play a player, right? Player in the in the um, kind of the um, uh, vernacular of the street or the clubbing uh, the scene. You could tell I'm so hip into the clubbing scene. He with the fewest strokes is not does not he with the does not does not rank high among the players right players that's better that's better dialogue there does not rank high among the players players there it is right okay so at some point you have to make a decision you want to be a good lover or a good golfer can't be both you see because in love he with the fewest strokes does not rank high rank high among the players that's good player player um some people are let's see um let's see uh what else some people uh, Player Todd to Nike. He's got Nike. Um, Nike. Nike has their Nike. Ooh, Nike, right? We have Nike, right? So we have Nike, right? Here's Nike. Uh, Nike's slogan just do it. Here's another double entendre possibility, right? Because double entendre is uh, is our joke main joke formula for this particular type of uh, situation here where we're doing listing techniques. Just do it. Does it cross over from golf, which is uh, Nike is uh, Tiger's main sponsor, to uh, uh, to sex? You betcha. Just do it. So um, here we go. Some people say that. Um, Tiger's, let's capitalize Tiger, Tiger's former appetite, because he said he gave it up, right? He was a sex addict. Uh, for sex, um, made him, him a better golfer. Ah, yes. Who would, uh, then who, what, where, who, what, what, why would they, who wants them to be a better golfer? I'm sure a sponsor, Nike does. So even his sponsor, uh, even his sponsor, Nike, Nike called him 
Um, call Tiger, call Tiger. Let's reiterate. Call Tiger today. Let's make it now, right? Call Tiger today and said, uh, I don't need a comma, and said, uh, hey, Tiger. Tiger. Uh, just do it, baby. Just do Is that another joke? I believe so. Bam! Let's put a little exclamation point because they, they're emphasizing something. Just do it. So let's look at what we got there. Uh, some people say the Tiger's former appetite for sex made him a better golfer. Even a sponsor, Nike, called today and said, hey, Tiger, just do it. Yeah, bam! Another joke, right? Uh, that's a good joke. That will work. Um... Okay, uh, so uh, let's look at the list. Golf play, golf balls, 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 of course, are fun. Uh, play around, play around's good. Want to play around, play around, play around, play around, play around. It's resonating, play around, play around. Okay, my head, play around, play around. How would that, let's keep going with the connotation. Some people say the Tiger's former appetite uh, for sex made him a better golfer. Even a sponsor, uh, Nike called today, said, Tiger, just do it. Um, Maybe the, okay, uh, here it is. Maybe the truth, truth is, um, Tiger was just a better golfer when, <laughs> here we go, he confused the term play uh, round. Let's make it this way. Play around. Yes, uh, I believe that's another joke. Uh, maybe the truth is Tiger was just a, a better golfer when he confused the term play around. See, again, double entendre, play around of golf and play around with the girl. So play around is definitely, it's a fit. Does it work? Is that a joke? It's uh, audience is the judge, of course, but I believe it has all the elements to uh, laughter. It fits a double entendre formula. It fits both with sex and it fits with uh, uh, golf. So I think that could work. Um, um, so this kind of, uh, we've uh, got a confusing theme here. Um, uh, how else could he confuse golf and uh, um, sex? Uh, he could uh, hooker. Uh, somebody who hooks. Uh, it's kind of an old phrase, not really used much. Uh, ball washer, wash balls, wash my balls. Uh, why? <laughs> Here's wash my balls right there. So I wrote it down here. Undress with her eyes, not uh, we address the ball, um, hit some balls, uh, bang me. Uh, just kind of stretching it. Uh, okay, uh, wash. Uh, <laughs> okay, how about this? Um, some say that Tiger was so involved. Why would it be confusing? Who, what, where, why, when, and how? Remember, some people say that Tiger uh, was uh, so involved with women. Uh, at one point... Some say that Tiger, uh, some say at one point, let's make it conversational, at one point, make it mis misdirect the audience with at one, uh, some say at one point, uh, that Tiger was so involved with women that he actually, actually confused sex with golf. Uh, it's starting to, it's starting to, be actually starting to confuse, starting, see, if he actually confused sex with golf, it's almost unbelievable that Tiger would confuse sex with golf. But if he started to, it means he was teetering on some sort of psychosis, and that's a possibility. It puts it in the realm of uh, imagination or what if, and rather than being a rock-solid absolute that the audience isn't going to buy, why not put it in a what if category and help us imagine that it could happen by saying he started, he actually started, he actually started um, confusing um, uh, golf with sex. It's almost hard to type and do this and think about jokes at the same time. I'm sorry about if I'm ranting here, but this is how I talk out jokes sometimes. Some say at one point that Tiger was so involved with women uh, that he actually started confusing golf with sex. Yes. And I have an idea. I want to see if I can finesse it in here. Golf with sex. Uh, one of his... Okay, one... Well, one lady, uh, one of his ladies, one of his ladies, uh, ladies, actually has, actually has a recording of Tiger, 
of a, how about a disappointed, a tiger got an ugly girl, what would he do? Disappointed, disapp of a disappointed tiger, um, ranting, ranting, uh, you mean I washed my balls for this? Aha! Is that a joke? I believe it is. Let's read it through and see if it's got a rhythm to it. Some say at one point uh, that Tiger was so involved with women that he actually started confusing golf with sex. One of his ladies actually has a recording of a disappointed Tiger ranting, You mean I washed my balls for this? <laughs> I like it. I think that's very. Uh, I think that's solid, and it's got the edge of balls. Balls is always funny. Um, makes me think of sweaty balls. Uh, if you saw that SNL sketch, this is um, uh, with Alec Baldwin. Um, some say at one point that Tiger was so involved with women that actually started confusing golf with sex. One of his ladies, uh, actually, there's two actuallys. Let's get rid of them. one of his ladies. Uh, that he, let's get rid of this actually. Good actuallys are usually in the second part of the joke, which is the punch line. Uh, that he started confusing golf with sex. One of his ladies, ladies, articulate, one of his ladies actually has a recording of a disappointed tiger ranting, you mean I washed my balls for this? Aha. And this is edgy, but I think it could even make it on late night TV because the balls actually refers to golf, double entendre. Just as in SNL when Alec Baldwin did sweaty balls, Christmas balls, wash my balls, put some, put some, uh, my balls start to sweat, um, that was a double entendre as well. So I think there's a possibility that that might actually make it on and because of the edge would get a really huge laugh because we're allowed to uh, misbehave here a little bit and have, have a good time with it. Um, um, let's see, uh, let's see, um, okay, uh, shoot, how much, all right, uh, so is it, I'm assuming that Tiger is earning less money, so if we have, look up Tiger Woods earnings last for 2010, so let's look at, let's see, Huffington Post, um, 22 million less, what's this about here? Go here. Isn't the internet amazing? Uh, Twenty minute, twenty-eight million. So uh, more than earnings, more than ninety million. But his estimated total earnings more than ninety million. Two thousand ten, twenty-two 20, million dollars less than last year. Uh, Woods is still number one on the list, but his estimated total earnings were more than ninety million, are right down thirty percent from nearly one hundred twenty-eight million two years ago. Okay. So his total earnings, and that's with um, that's with sponsors as well as. Uh, yeah, that's with sponsors as well as his, um, so he's lost his earnings, he's now making less, uh, so don't feel sorry for Tiger, let's keep it moving, don't feel sorry, we're making a sort of a running monologue here for a Tiger, don't feel sorry for Tiger, um, Tiger, um, uh, he made about, what, 90 million, was it 90 million? He made about 90 million. 90 million. He made about 90 million last year. Uh, which, and here we go, which just about covers uh, his alimony. There's a joke, right? Just about covers his alimony, um, which should uh, which should cover his alimony. Uh, Ninety million may sound like a lot, and I've got this figure in my head, so I'm going to make this joke up. Uh, Ninety million uh, may sound like a lot, a lot, but uh, for Tiger, uh, but for Tiger, that's low. Uh, that's that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Right now, yeah. This, I've got this, like I said, this figure is in my head. Uh, he makes he makes less than Larry the Cable Guy. It's true, Larry the Cable Guy. I'll, I'll show you in a second. I don't want to give away the joke. Larry the Cable Guy. That is the joke, really. Uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Um, let's get that right. Larry the Cable Guy. It's in quotes because that's a fictitious character. Larry's real name is Dan Whitney. Um... Larry the Cable Guy. That's right, because Larry the Cable Guy, Larry, made a hundred and ten million last year. Uh, all right, now 
convergence of two or more ideas. We're at, we've got a brand new idea coming in here, Larry the Cable Guy. So I know a little something about Larry the Cable Guy because I was doing some research on him last week for some jokes I was doing. Um, and I know in my head that he makes 110 million, made 110 million last year. Um, uh, and I also know something else about Larry the Cable Guy that I think everybody would get who knows him. Um, maybe... And it still relates to our subject matter, which is sex and golf. Maybe uh, that's because um, that's because Larry, the cable guy, cable guy, uh, still <laughs> knows how to. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? Um, I'll italicize it. Get her. Done. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, does I sound like Sling Blade right there? Uh, so don't feel sorry for Tiger. He made about 90 million last year, which just about covers his alimony. 90 million may sound like a lot, but Tiger to Tiger, but to Tiger, not. But Tiger, that's bad. But to Tiger, uh, that's bad. Right now, he makes less than Larry the Cable Guy funny. Uh, Larry made $110 million last year. Maybe that's because Larry the Cable Guy still knows how to get her done. Okay. Uh, multiple lap points in that joke. So that's a, that's a winner. That's, uh, that's got two lap points right there. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me go back to the article. Uh, Phil Mickelson. We read something about Tiger. Where was it? Back here. Uh, played since a uh, 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 knee and Achilles tendon injuries. So some injuries he hasn't played, which contributed to the who, what, where, why, when, and how, right? We're asking questions of the joke. Why would he fall out of the top 20? Partially because of injuries uh, that's caused him to make less money. So if we go uh, part of the problem. Now, this is the hardest part, especially when you're a beginning joke writer, is trying to, once you have the ideas in your head, trying to finesse a way of explaining the joke or telling the joke. What words do I use to tell the joke? And so just because I've done this a lot, I'm able to come up with more ideas. Uh, so part of the problem, well, the idea I have in my head, I'm going to get it down on paper before I forget. Uh, those of you who have experienced this know how quickly a joke can vanish. Uh, part of the problem is the, wow, oh, where was I? God bless it. Okay, uh, sorry. Here it is. Uh, part of the problem is that Tiger uh, had some uh, Tigers. Tigers had some injuries uh, this year and had to drop out uh, and had to drop out of. Let's see, uh, drop out a couple of, uh, of a couple of tournaments. Drop out of a couple of tournaments. 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 All right, that's the fact. That's the straight line. Now, comedy is about a straight line and a punchline, also known as a setup, but the straight line has to be straight. It's best if it's a fact, if it's honest and it's true and it's a fact. So we said part of the problem is that Tiger has had some injuries uh, uh, this year. This year would be good if I actually did this right. Uh, this year, uh, this year and had to drop out of a couple of tournaments. Uh, you know what that means. Now, this is a great focuser. You know what that means. Why? Uh, because what this does is it actually implies to the audience that this is the truth. You know what that means? It's a misdirection. We're misdirecting them towards, oh, this has got to be the answer to this part of the problem is that Tiger had some injuries this year and had to drop out of a couple of tournaments. You know what that means. So it makes the audience think, what does it mean? And they're thinking of answers right now, and probably not the answer you're coming up with as a comedian. So you spin it in another way. So here's the misdirection. You know what that means. And this is where you hit him with the punch. That's going to cut deep into stripper money. There we go. Stripper money. That is a joke right there. Part of the problem is that Tigers had some injuries this year and had to drop out of a couple of tournaments. You know what that means? Uh, Tigers, uh, you know what that means? Uh, that's going to cut deep into stripper money. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that makes me think of strippers. Uh, who, what, where, why, when, and how? And who, what, where, why, when, and how? Is Tiger in a strip club? That would be interesting. Uh, who, what, when, uh, is Tiger top 20? Has he still got the same game? Uh, same game in the strip clubs? Uh, 
So when you drop out of the top 20 in golf, can you be the same kind of player you were at the strip clubs? Probably not. Uh, so if you go when you drop, when you drop out of the top 20 uh, in golf, uh, can you be? Can you? Uh, no. Can you truly, truly look a stripper? There we go. In the eye. It's just funny hearing, seeing, thinking a tiger with a stripper because that's a situation we're normally not used to seeing them, and it's like a fish out of water. And just by that, it's incongruous in our normal perception of how we perceive somebody, in this case, tiger. So if we put them in the strip club, that's funny automatically. A little kind of a, a giggle starts to uh, develop in the audience. Uh, can you truly look a stripper in the eye and say, uh, what do you say to a stripper? Baby, uh, I got game. None. I got game. Okay, let's see how that joke plays. Nah, not that great. Uh, when, uh, when you, when you drop out of the top 20 in golf, can you truly look a stripper in the eye and say, baby, I got game. Not bad. That's not a bad joke. That could get some play. Um, let's say number one to number 20. That's got to be different. Let's do a compare and contrast here, maybe. Compare and contrast is where you set up one possibility, hit them in another. Uh, Kathy Ladman, a uh, very funny lady, taught me this one. Uh, I remember hearing her do this joke one time, and it uh, just really laid out this particular forma formula called compare and contrast to me. She said, I know... My, uh, I know that I have complex skin. I'm pretty sure my boyfriend has a face. With that joke, when she said that joke, that made me laugh uh, because of the compare and contrast. She said of one thing is a pretty complex issue, complex skin. She even said it literally and then said her boyfriend, her boyfriend is so dense that he doesn't even know he has a face, which is very funny because it's simple. Um, he's a simpleton, too, and it's a double entendre there as well. Uh, effect is, uh, but we think about this. It's got to affect his confidence with the ladies. Uh, you look uh, to the best in the world. Um, okay, okay, so that's got, to, that's got to affect his tiger's confidence. Uh, confidence. Uh, confidence with the ladies the ladies when you look at a girl capitalize when you look at a girl uh, you look at a girl and say I'm the best in the world the world I'm the best in the world comma that means something that means something doesn't it it's got to mean something uh, it, uh, yeah, that means something. It just doesn't, okay, just, if I go silent here, it's just because I'm trying to figure out the wording. The same punch. In fact, the same punch when you say, um, <laughs> when you say, I'm like, make it sound kind of, the, the 22nd uh, best best in the world. Put a little emphasis on there. Uh, bitches. Okay. Uh, this has got to, that, that's got to affect Tiger's confidence with the ladies. When you look at a girl and say, I'm the best in the world, that means something. It just doesn't pack the same punch when you say, like, I'm like the 22nd best in the world, bitches. See? It's a big difference. Um, <laughs> So uh, I think that's uh, for time's sake. Let's wrap this thing up. We're already going way past the time I wanted to do these jokes on. I just really wanted to write five or six um, to show you how it works. Uh, wait, I've got one in my head right now. That is, let me make sure I got this all the way. Um, ball marker, you're away. Uh, bucket of balls, blow me. Uh, Banging strippers, house my best golfer in the world. Missionary dog leg stripper and gross. Where is that thing? I, I know something's in my head and I can't find it. Um, what is that website for. Ah, there it is. Uh, 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 okay, so we'll end it with this. Oops. Um, uh, looks like. Let's do back to the, ba the. Remember what we talked about right at the beginning? I had to shatter the assumption. When the joke says Tiger fell out of the top 20, we assume it's golf. Now here I'm going to spin it another way. Oops, uh, looks like uh, I got it all wrong. Um, bam. Uh, Tiger didn't 
fall out of the top 20 uh, in golf. In golf, uh, yeah. Evidently, that's a good focuser. Evidently, it sounds like a fact. We misdirect. That was his uh, client ranking. Client ranking was a good word. Uh, on his client ranking should be hyphenated. Client ranking on. Ashley Madison. Uh -huh. Dot com. There we go. Dot com. Boom! We got another joke. Okay, so, oops, looks like you got it all wrong. Tiger didn't fall out of the top 20 in golf. Evidently, that was his client ranking on AshleyMadison.com. Solid. I love that joke. That's a good joke. So here, let's take a look. We got one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Larry the Cable Guy with two lap points. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, because we count two lap points as uh, two. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen jokes. We got fifteen jokes. I don't know. What does that take a half an hour? Uh, Twenty minutes? Something like that? There you go. So basically, never done before. I just showed you writing jokes right in the moment. We take a sh subject. We put the line on a separate piece of paper. We do the listing technique. That's the key. Do the listing technique. Without that, you're, you're shot. You can do some in your head, but you really start to clarify it when you really sit down and do the tedious work of listing all the different ideas so that you can come up with more and more and more jokes. As you can see, in the short period of time, we created 15 jokes, 15 solid jokes, some better than others, admittedly, but 15 great jokes that you could use or sell at any given time. So there you go. I just wanted to show you quickly how that worked. I hope you enjoy it. I uh, play it. Uh, get, uh, get a kick out of it. Try to apply it yourselves. Make sure you do the lists. The lists are crucial. Make sure that you, you isolate the headline. Don't judge it for whether it's funny or not. Just put it down. Look at the, the converging ideas that are possibly in there. We had Tiger Wo Woods, Life and Sex. We also had, uh, we also had the sex list over here. And uh, you can, again, do not edit yourself first time through. Put it right down. And then you can just start cranking out jokes. So let's save this. This is new. Uh, let's save it as Tiger Woods list. We have Tiger Woods falls out of the top 20. There we go. We're going to save that. Now we have 15 jokes that we just wrote in a 20 to 30 minute period. Add on to that the listing technique and maybe you go into an hour, an hour and a half. Brand new jokes doing the, the work of the listing technique. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your comments. Please do me a favor and put your comments below. Um, here we have a section there for comments. Like this thing. Put it on Facebook. Show people. Let's show people how we can start to write jokes. This is uh, Jerry Corley, uh, founder of the Stand Up Comedy Clinic. I hope you enjoyed this little video I wanted to put together for you. And uh, I will talk to you again soon. Take care.